What's up, Internet? My name's Ori. Welcome back to the channel. It is Saturday, September 14th, day number 61, outside the Big Brother house. So much to go over. Who won HOH? Who was nominated? Where were the feeds for so long? Plus, welcome to Janky World, where your nightmares are our dreams. Let's talk about that, plus all the intel drama and more from yesterday's live feeds. But first, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Speaking of, if you were here yesterday for the morning live stream, if you guys aren't aware, every Friday morning we go live, do the same update you get here, uh, and then afterwards we jump into the chat and hang out. It's a good time. If you weren't here for that, uh, the feeds were down even during the update. We were live for almost two hours. They were still down. They did not come back the entire time since the episode had ended. It wasn't until after our live stream was over that eventually the feeds did come back. Uh, and we weren't exactly sure why they were down in the first place. Was it part of Ainsley needing to travel and leaving her junior artificial neurokinetic intelligence entity, a.k.a. Jenky, in charge? Was it an endurance comp that just went super long we were being locked out of? Well, turns out it was a bit of both. Feeds came back and the house guests were in the backyard that had been turned into a wacky carnival amusement park called Jenky World. <laughs> <laughs> this is something else. Uh, they will be spending the entire week living outdoors. If you remember back to BB24, it's very similar to the whole Dire Fest uh, situation where half the house was living outside, half the house was living inside. This case, though, there's no split house aspect, just everybody living outside, pretty much just to torture them. Uh, they're sleeping on cots. They're eating only pizza, ice cream, candy. They have a dance floor they have to go on uh, when they're called upon. Uh, in fact, actually here, if I pull this up, yeah, I got some pictures I can share here with you guys. This is what the backyard looks like currently. You got the big janky world sign. There's carnival games back there. Uh, you can see all the random things uh, set up. They got kind of a nice little couch set up as well going on there. Over here is another kind of uh, picture of kind of getting a layout of the land. You've got the ice cream parlor back there uh, where they can get all the ice cream uh, they could ever desire. Uh, another kind of overview picture of everything going on as well. A little bit of a close up shot here of the carnival games. You can see they've got uh, all these little uh, stuffed animals they can they can win. They were actually pulling them off and they had staples inside of them. Uh, but you got the little uh, bucket shot where you got to kind of toss the, the ball in the bucket. You got the ring toss. They got that one where you got to knock down the bottles uh, all kind of around. Uh, over here, you have a better picture of the dance floor. Every so often, they say it's a Jenkies dance party and all the house guests have to go and dance on the dance floor. You can also get a peek there of their sleeping arrangements. Everybody's sleeping on cots uh, all around the dance floor. Uh, you can see Angela here. Tucked on in there, uh, they do have sleeping bags and blankets and pillows, so they have some comfort uh, out there as well. Uh, a look at the shower situation, just kind of a straight up outdoor shower. It's uh, pretty much the same one they have out there all the time uh, for when they kind of want to wash off after uh, getting in the pool and things like that, or if they're just sweaty or whatever. Uh, they have that outdoor shower, but they've added a little bit of privacy uh, to it here. I should get off this picture before I get all the ladies worked up. Uh, over here, you can see a little bit of the kitchen set up. They got a fridge, uh, a, kind of a pizza maker over there, a fridge, a freezer full of pizza as well. Uh, and that's all they get. Angela was very devastated that that's the only food they get, but that is what they are getting for the week. Uh, behind the stage, they have a little uh, storage area where they're keeping all of their bags. They let them go inside the house uh, before they had to move out there permanently just to get everything they would, thought they would need uh, for the entire week. So that's where they're kind of keeping everything uh, all stored back there. Uh, and then you can also see here they actually have Janky World merch uh, they can wear during the week as well. They are really going all out 
uh, with this whole janky universe. Uh, there's even a whole little new janky AI. It's this like little droid looking thing uh, that is uh, giving them little uh, instructions uh, all throughout the week as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, very interesting on uh, how this is all set up. Uh, but now you may be wondering, Ori, what about the head of household? Well, HOH was an endurance competition. Basically, the whole comp was uh, holding a stick out in front of you where you were holding a marshmallow uh, and kind of keeping that from uh, falling down. Uh, basically, it's a lot like pressure cooker, but with a stick and a marshmallow uh so it was uh really kind of a a fun comp that we got to miss out on uh it came down to a final four of rubina pam angela and leah rubina was the first to drop of those final four and after that leah ended up making a deal with cam and angela for safety cam then dropped angela then dropped leaving Leah as your head of household for the week. Now, she said that Quinn had actually left her uh, his shirt. She didn't wear it at first because she was afraid the comp was going to have some kind of goo and it would get all messed up. Uh, but when she saw that it wouldn't get messed up, she went and last minute grabbed it, put it on. She said to herself, I need to win this. I need to win this. And she did. She came up big. Uh, I am really disappointed that we didn't get to watch this on feeds. Uh, and it's really kind of a shame because these kind of competitions that go on for hours are just so much fun on the feeds. Uh, just hanging out, watching it, you know, waiting to find out who's going to win HOH, seeing who falls uh, and who drops off during the competition, uh, seeing that, you know, uh, just strength that they dig deep to to go on longer and longer, the deals when they're getting made and those conversations. Uh, it's really kind of what the live feeds are for in the first place. Uh, and we know that we've had a lot of issues with the live feeds. Uh, the lack of rewind and no archive on the live feeds has been a pain. Uh, but we've seemed to have gotten over that. That is with something that we're just kind of dealing with. And we have found ways to adapt uh, throughout the season. Uh, but yeah, missing out on a competition like this really stinks. And other than the added twist of it being that they're living outside for the week, I really don't know any reason other than they just want to save it all for the episode on why they didn't show us. Uh, the only other thing I could also think is maybe they didn't think it would actually go this long. Uh, they've done a, a competition like this similar two times before in Big Brother. Neither went really that long. Uh, about like three hours, which is still a decent amount of time and would be great to watch on the feeds. Uh, but I don't know if they actually really felt like uh, this bunch was going to be able to last that long. They seem to stink at endurance competitions. You guys remember the wall? That one, uh, you know, didn't go so it didn't go that long, right? Uh, they were they were off that wall pretty quickly. Uh, so I wonder if maybe that was a situation where they just expected them all to drop within half an hour. Uh, but yeah. 10 hours and somehow somehow angela and leah end up as the final two in a competition that lasted 10 hours what kind of a janky world are we living in Whew. oh right yeah it is is literally a janky world anyway <laughs> Uh, Leah had one-on-ones uh, throughout the day where she ended up meeting uh, with people uh, kind of in private, but as much of a one -on private one-on-one -on -one as you can have uh, in the backyard with everybody back there, uh, she ended up uh, doing them up on the balcony, which is also where the Dyer Room is set up. Uh, again, if you remember uh, Dyer Fest from BB24, it was a similar setup with a Dyer Room uh, upstairs. She ended up uh, talking to Cam and they kind of talked about, like, listen, if T-Core goes up on the block, she's pretty much a lock to stay. Whoever she would be sitting next to would end up becoming the target. Cam kind of pushes that, you know, because of that situation, right? You might as well just put Chemo and Rubina up on the block. Uh, hope that, you know, you don't have to uh, have the veto be used. Nominations stay the same. You get the least amount of blood on your hands. So you don't have to put T-Core up if she's not going to be voted out anyway. 
Uh, when Leah met up with MJ, MJ kind of pushed that Chelsea would be really keeping them safe this week. And Leah tells her that she's looking at Chemo and Rubina as uh, uh, the nominees with t -Core as a potential replacement nominee. Leah and Chelsea, they had their conversation. And uh, Leah in this one pretty much asked for just solid advice, right? She wants to make sure that one of the trio of TKR is to go. Uh, and Chelsea agrees, but she also thinks that t -Core can be trusted uh, and isn't likely to win anything anyway. Leah does worry, though, that if she puts up Chemo and Rabina and t -Core wins the veto, and before, before Leah can even finish the thought, Chelsea cuts her off. She says, that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. And I think this is because Chelsea knows that if that is the situation and Leah were to nominate Kimo and Rabina and t -Core wins veto taking one of them down with Leah's deals that she has with Angela and Cam, that only leaves two potential options, which would be MJ and Chelsea. And she would be desperate for that not to be the situation because MJ would be least likely to get nominated from Leah, whereas uh, Chelsea, uh, I think believes, and I do as well, that Chelsea would end up being the renom in that situation. Now, uh, Leah does say that she thinks that the veto might be something to do with counting. If you remember earlier, I said there's lots of different random things all around. They've got uh, a bunch of uh, bottles in the ring toss. They've got the stuffed animals. Uh, you saw all those like rubber duckies in the pool. Uh, so she was thinking that there might be uh, kind of a competition where they have to count. Or maybe even it's kind of like the guesstimation game of like, this is how many rubber duckies, uh, you know, 10 looks like, right? How many rubber duckies are here? And uh, you would have to do uh, that for the veto. So after this, Chelsea leaves, went down, started counting everything in the backyard. Literally everything she could see, she starts counting. So she is desperate to make sure that uh, she has a really good shot at winning this veto. Now, uh, Leah met up with Rubina, who she told uh, was uh, a long-term part of uh, Leah's plan, right? She wants uh, Rubina around, uh, and she wasn't sure what she was going to do just yet. She needs to talk to others and, and see, uh, which is basically, a.k.a. Rubina, I'm nominating you. Now, Rubina actually says she feels like she's been very disposable, and she doesn't want to be like kind of that pawn star that keeps getting uh, constantly nominated, she uh, tells Leah that, you know, I'm not really a threat to your game, or I, at least I, I hope you don't see me as a threat to your game. And Leah says she doesn't. She feels sorry uh, that Rubina feels that way, that she's disposable. Uh, and uh, they both, you know, say that, you know, they get in their own heads a lot. They overthink things. They hug it out. Uh, and Leah says to her before she leaves, just know I love you, a.k.a. I'm about to nominate you. Now, Rubina ended up going and chatting with uh, T-Core and Chelsea about not being able to uh, bring herself to throw anybody else under the bus, uh, even though Leah has limited options. Uh, and then later, uh, T-Core and Rubina have a, a conversation without Chelsea, uh, where <laughs> Rubina continues to say, she's like, I'm just so bad at this game. I can't throw anybody under the bus like that. And T-Core says to her, remember what we said, People over profits. Oh, no, no. Profits over people inside the Big Brother house. That is the rule you should go by. Uh, now, t -Core and Leah, they ended up having their uh, chat where uh, they talked about, you know, wanting to work together. Leah saying that she's always seen t -Core as an individual and not part of any alliance. Uh, Leah goes on to say that, you know what, last week really hurt, uh, and, you know, it was something that actually taught her that you don't need anyone else in this game. You can pivot, and you can change, and you do what you need to do to get further. And w what I basically got from that was, a.k.a. t -Core, I'm getting rid of your friends this week. Deal with it. Uh, t -Core then goes and talks to Chemo. Uh, she encourages him to go talk to Leah. Uh, but he said anytime that he had talked to Leah, that uh, she said it would be in her best interest to put two friends up on the block. 
uh, she says to him, like, listen, if you're going to go out, at least go out with no regrets. You know, you've been on the uh, the block three times. You've been a half, not three times. Uh, and he's like, yeah, I know. That's why I want to go blow things up. But what's there to blow up? I'm not, I, I think people are very aware of the dynamics in the house right now. You've got two trios and you got a shaky duo of Leah and Angela. What what would be your blow up? What what would you say, Chemo, that would change the game? There's I I don't know what you're what you're you're thinking. Uh, that uh was a uh, definitely a weird one. Uh, now I never actually saw Chemo meet up with Leah. Uh, if they did at all, I don't one hundred percent know if that convo took place. If it was uh when you know feeds went down at some point. If it was just kind of off camera and they were focusing on something else. Uh, but nominations uh, took uh, place. Feeds went down for that. Uh, and uh, there seems like there were some kind of like bottles involved. Uh, the janky AI said that it was going to be uh, some kind of a nomination game. Uh, but no, it was just kind of a normal nomination ceremony where Leah did nominate Kimo and Rabina for the block this week. We'll update our little board here. Uh, and Kimo... He was not taking it well. Uh, he went and wrapped himself up in blankets on the cot uh, and was kind of kind of relaxing and uh, just kind of staying away from everybody, just kind of letting himself uh, kind of soak it all in. Uh, but to be fair, many of them are not doing very well. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier with the, the freezer, Cam had his head like in the freezer trying to stay cool. It is very hot. In the backyard, uh, they were icing each other down, eating a lot of ice cream, just trying to, to stay cool. They actually kind of lucked out because last week in L.A. was even more hot uh, than it was this week. Uh, I might actually have to kind of become a little bit of a weather person this week. So that's a thing. Uh, lots of sleeping, uh, playing different carnival games, uh, which also we talked about. Maybe the veto is uh, a counting competition. I could also see the carnival games being some kind of a hint towards the veto competition, maybe even like larger scale versions of those carnival games. Maybe just those carnival games in general are the veto competition. Uh, but uh, yeah, it could be interesting to see how that all plays out. Kind of a funny big group chat took place at night as well, where everybody was just chatting about, you know, past seasons uh, that had taken place and, uh, how different house guests were. Uh, Angela, I swear that if if we didn't know we, like what Angela was, right? Like if we didn't know how Angela handles things and how Angela views things, you would feel like this was almost scripted what she said. <laughs> she brings up Josh from BB19 and the pots and the pans and the Da, 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 and how he was mean and rude uh, and how, you know what? I just don't think I could live with someone like that. Angela. Angela, come on now. <laughs> come on. I, again, if, it, if we didn't know how Angela was, I would have said that she was, she was pulling one on us, right? Like this, this was, this was her being sarcastic, right? Like she, she had to know what she was doing, but also it's Angela. So I don't think she actually knew what she was doing. Interesting enough though, t and Rabina talked later about how they cannot stand her anymore. Not even her voice. And they said, if they win HOH, Next week, they're putting Angela up on the block and sending her out. Uh, these two do not deserve to win Big Brother. Period. The end. They don't deserve to win. It, if you are going to waste your HOH next week, you're, first of all, you're already planning about winning HOH next week when Vito hasn't even taken place and you're potentially losing one of your best allies in chemo. But if you would then go on to use your HOH next week to take out Angela, you are missing the plot with this whole people over profit stuff. Like, it is... 
Ooh, it is a thing. Also, t once again is mad that her friends are on the block uh, and they're making her choose uh, between them. She didn't do anything to stop it, though. Uh, and they talk about how Chelsea isn't happy about it either, they don't think. Which, are you kidding me? Are you, are you kidding? Chelsea is giddy. Chelsea is studying to make sure that t doesn't win the power of veto. What do you what do you mean she's not happy? Her allies and her trio are not on the block. Her only worry is if t wins the power of veto and she's doing everything she can to make sure that t does not win that power of veto. Chelsea, the only reason why you might think she's not happy is because she knows there is a chance she could be going up on the block. t I almost don't even know if she realizes that she could be the replacement nominee. I really don't. I really, really don't. Uh, Vito should be today, and that, again, could have major effects uh, since the numbers are so low uh, with what, what we're dealing with, and there's only so many options. Uh, I almost kind of want t to win just for the drama. Uh, you know, who would she even save? That in itself would be kind of dramatic. I would expect that she would save uh, Rubina over uh, Kimo, even though uh, Kimo is our longer ally. She's become very much closer to Rubina uh, over the past few weeks. Uh, and if that would happen, then I think Chelsea would go up on the block. Angela would then be the tie breaking vote as both do, uh, trios would end up having two votes each. Angela would break that tie. I think, I think, I think Angela would send Chelsea home. I think Angela would keep chemo. It could be wild. Actually. In fact, let's go and uh, take a look here at our allegiance chart uh, for the week. Uh, you can see also with the janky world uh, improvements. Um, not too much has changed. Uh, I have Chelsea still kind of as uh, the 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 top of the crop. Uh, she is definitely uh, the one who's playing so far the best, has the most kind of social credit uh, throughout the house. I got t Core just a little bit under her because there are just so many people who are protecting her uh, and looking out for her, trying to make sure that she uh, doesn't end up on the block anyway. And again, even if she does, it does seem like she would probably have the votes to stay over Rubina or Chemo. Just underneath there, I have raised Leah on up. Now, we've talked about before, I almost feel like HOH just in general gives you a little bit of a boost uh, to your social credit because you have so much power uh, during that week. But also, I just do feel like her position has come up uh, since even if she does take out somebody from the trio, we've already heard them talking about not going after Leah. They would go after Angela. Uh, meanwhile, you would have the trio there who would still probably end up going after uh, Chemo before they would go after Leah. Same with all of the girls. I think they would go after someone like Chemo or, or Cam uh, if they ended up staying this week. So there's just plenty of options that I actually think uh, Leah would end up doing uh, better. Uh, and I think even MJ would be somebody that they would see as more of a threat than Leah. So I've kind of brought her up uh, a little bit. She might be a little bit more in line with MJ and Cam uh, being realistic here, but I, I do think at the moment, because of HOH, she gets that little bump above. Again, MJ just below her. I actually think she's in a better spot than Cam is. Again, because Cam would be the one that, uh, for example, uh, Chemo would probably hone in on before he would uh, pick off MJ. Uh, after Cam, I would then have Rubina and Chemo just below uh, as they're the ones that everybody's kind of throwing under the bus. Uh, even t is not really helping to try and save them at all. Uh, so they're the ones kind of on the lower end of the totem pole. And then, of course, you've got Angela at the bottom who who has swum back up a little bit. Right. She was she was really uh, getting getting deep under the water, barely showing anything uh, down there. Uh, but she's she's peeking her head out. She's 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 treading water at the moment, uh, not completely under the surface uh, there on our board. 
But yeah, that's kind of how I see things in the game at the moment. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking about that in the comments down below. What do you think of everything going on right now? What do you think of Janky World? What do you think of Leah pulling off the win for HOH this week? Also, what do you think of her nominations with Rubina and Chemo? If I was her, I would have just, you know, ripped the Band-Aid off and did one from each side of the house. That way you guarantee that even if the veto uh, is or isn't used, you and Angela kind of have more control over which side you get to choose who goes. I probably would have done something like t and Chelsea uh, and just put both of them up, uh, guaranteeing that, you know, probably one of them would go. But then again, you do have the worry about like if uh, the... Vito would be used on Chelsea or t -Core. there was a good chance that either of them would stay. So maybe your better option would have also been something uh, like t -Core and Cam, Chelsea and Chemo, something along those kind of lines that if one of them were to win uh, the power of Vito, they couldn't use it on the other. Uh, and then it would be a situation where you would then have the option to put up either t -Core and Chelsea guaranteeing one of them goes just because again they are the ones at the top of the pile right they are the ones that everybody is looking out for um it shouldn't even be a question when you're listening to these conversations it is very clear that everyone's looking out and protecting chelsea everyone's looking out and protecting t -Core. you gotta break that up if you can take out either one of them the other two kind of fall apart uh and then become more workable and you can actually kind of get in there more but as long as those two are at the tops of their trios, you really don't have any wiggle room to be able to kind of take MJ away from Chelsea at this point or take Cam away from Chelsea at this point. Same thing with Rubina and Chemo. You can't get either of them away from t -Core. You would have to take t -Core away from them. Uh, but let me know what you guys are thinking in those comments down below. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, if you made it, all the way to the end of this video smash that like button it lets youtube know that we're having a good time here uh hit that notification bell so you never miss a video you never miss a stream thank you guys again all so much for watching uh we had a great time on friday for the friday morning live stream we had a great time on thursday night for the live eviction watch party uh we are on our way to 50 k here on the channel uh and i cannot thank you guys enough for all the love and support that you guys show me here uh if you want to check out more things uh check out the links to uh all of my socials uh, in the description pinned comment you can check out things like the discord and twitter great place to keep track of when videos get posted but also discord we have a great community that's being built over there with tons of big brother fans always chatting about what's going on on the live feeds, uh, other reality shows. We got channels for all different kinds of stuff. Uh, sports, uh, posting pictures of your pets. It's a good old time. Go check out Discord. Uh, also check out uh, Twitch and Kick. We definitely want to be getting those up and running uh, once the season's over. Big Brother just dominates all the time. Uh, we're talking about doing a lot of really cool stuff, doing some games, some other uh, reality show watch parties. Uh, so it should be a lot of fun over there as well. Thank you guys all again so much for watching. And I will see you next time. <laughs> Go get Kim's right horse. Yes. Midnight yes. hour. Uh, well, well. Well. Yeah. Please, because I have to pee. That's the first one of the day. I bet you we leave and then they start playing it again. No. Oh. Oh. I have to pee.